Praise the Lord, you are tuning in to the media ministry of Apostle Barbara R. Thomas. This ministry is designed to bring forth revelation and encouragement and to enlighten your minds. Now listen as the woman of God brings you revelation from the word of God. Take the praises from the people. But how many know that in spite of everything, you got something to praise God about? Hallelujah. We ain't dead nothing to wake you up this morning. That's enough to praise the Lord of God all by himself. Come on. Hallelujah. Because he didn't have to let you break up this morning. Hallelujah. And if you walked in here, come on now. Hallelujah. Didn't nobody have to carry you. You ought to praise him in there. Hallelujah. Don't you frustrate the presence of the Lord. Don't you frustrate the presence of the Lord. This morning, and he began to talk to me about it. I'm just going to say something about this scripture. Then I'm going to do what the Lord told me to do. Obey God. When I was shopping down, I'm not a person that pump and prime people. Uh -huh. I'm just a firm believer. If you know God's been good, that ought to be the praise God. Right there. Right there. Hallelujah. I don't believe in a whole lot of theatrics and all that stuff. Hallelujah. And I, 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 I got a long way to go this year. Hallelujah. And I guarantee you, if you don't want to praise him, I got something to praise him about today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands and give God some glory in here. Hallelujah. Because, you know, anytime there's a move of God and, and people begin to noise abroad that God is moving, there's always someone that got to come in with a bad spirit. All I'm saying that. Hallelujah. They try to suppress what God is doing. But how many know that in this hour right now, you can't let nothing separate you? Come on. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them you ain't going to worry me. I'm going to praise God if I got to praise God over you. Hallelujah. And if you're not careful, I might step on your feet tonight. Because I feel something about to happen up in here. Because some of us came in here with an expectation that we're not leaving out of here the same way we came. And I'm telling you right now, ain't nobody going to stop my praise tonight. Because I know that God's been good to me. Now all y'all that don't want to be here, I wish y'all really leave. Hallelujah. Because I'm telling you, i got something to praise God about on tonight. Hallelujah. Ain't no need of you sitting up here getting frustrated because we're going to praise God in it. Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth and give the glory by Him. Come on, give the glory by Him in this place. Let me tell you something, people of God. I need everybody to get on one accord. Musicians, everybody, come on. Because I'm about to praise my God. I woke up this morning and God absolutely positively begin to uh, open my understanding about some things when it comes to the miracle working power of God. Hallelujah. And one thing that I understand and know that we're getting ready to go into a season of recovery. Uh, look at somebody and tell them I'm about to recover some things. Hallelujah. And so he woke me up with 1 Samuel 30 and 8. And he began to talk to me about that. That's not where I'm going, but I need to drop this. Because there are some people that come to revivals and conferences and all that, but they come with a skeptical about whether God can really move and work miracles. Oh, y'all ain't saying about that. Hallelujah. I've been telling you for a couple days. For uh, Ever since we began, I told you that God's going to work supernatural miracles on behalf of his people. Hallelujah. And that he was getting ready to open doors. And even on last night, the Lord decreed to us, come on now, that we were getting ready to experience a supernatural move of God. 
Uh -huh. Hallelujah. And even in the course of that, sometimes even when people hear what God is saying, they still can't fathom in their mind that God is able to perform the miraculous. Uh -huh. But I'm here to tell you tonight that God worked a supernatural miracle for me today. I got up this morning, Apostle, hallelujah, and I woke up with a determination because God began to say that this would be a day of miracles. This would be a day that doors would open. This would be a day that he would put an end to the naysayers. This would be a day when people would recognize that God is on their side. He said this was going to be a day when they would know that everybody that tried to come against you, everybody that tried to stop you, Let 
He will strike. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them, you better go get your miracle too. The spirit of the Lord began to tell me. He said, the people need to see an example of faithfulness. That you being faithful to God will pay off. Y'all sitting up here waiting to get a mansion in the sky. When God said there's an abundant life waiting on you right here. Look at somebody and tell them things about to change now. That there's a breakthrough miracle in progress on my behalf. Hallelujah. And see, you got to get away from people that don't believe God. Hallelujah. You got to walk away from folks that don't have a mindset. I said, God, if you can do that, I know you can deliver my son. I know you can. Oh, God ain't saying nothing. I know you can deliver my son. I know you can bring my children out. Hallelujah. Oh, no doubt about it. There's some of y'all sitting in here right now. You've been waiting on the move of God. Hallelujah. I come to let you know that God has shifted this region. It's a miracle already taking place. He has opened up the miracle of anointing. You get ready to be blessed spiritually and naturally. So he's getting ready to do some great things on your behalf. There's getting ready to be an outpour on our behalf because we the people of God. We have suffered. Oh my God. We have went through, but I'm telling you right now, the change has come. Look at somebody and tell them my change has come now. Thank you, Lord. One thing that I've done, Apostle, that God is doing is He's working supernatural miracles. Hallelujah. He's working supernatural miracles. And He's bringing His word to pass that He has spoken concerning His people. So we honor the Lord on tonight. I want to give that testimony. Hallelujah. Because some of you are about to get hit. Y'all about to get hit. With the supernatural move of God. Trust me. You holler. But God, get ready to do something for you. I promise you, He get ready to do something for you. See, sometimes we, the people of God, and we don't catch what God is saying, we'll miss what He's doing. Oh, God ain't saying that. Hallelujah. My thing is, in this hour, I have to see beyond my natural ability. Hallelujah. Nobody but God can cause such a miracle to take place. Hallelujah. But he began to talk to me about something. So we honor the Lord on tonight. Come on, give God a hand pray. Come on, give God a hand pray. I said, give God a hand pray. Give a praise in you. We thank God for the angel of this house, Apostle Brown. We thank God for her. We thank God for Apostle Rita, to Prophet Tinsley. We thank God for them. We thank God for all the men and women of God, Prophet Keisha, Keosha. Hallelujah. All gave a new name. Thank God for the band of God being here all tonight. The founder of this building. We thank God that he's here. And so we're giving God some glory all tonight. Hallelujah. But so how many know that God is getting ready to do something in you that nobody can take credit for but him? That's right, He's getting ready to perform a miracle that nobody can take the credit for. We are in a day and hour right now where people want to say, if I didn't pray for you, you wouldn't have got this. You understand what I'm saying? You know, people want to take the credit for what only God can do. Uh, we got a whole lot of people saying, if I didn't pray for you, you never would have got healed. But whether you prayed for me or not, I still know the healer. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And so in this day and hour, there are going to be miracles that's getting ready to be worked huh, without man being able to take credit for them. Because for some reason, people think that you can't make it unless they help you make it. But how many know that God in this hour, he's putting his people in a position to where they gotta trust him no matter what it looks like. Some of you get ready to walk into situations that's gonna supernaturally bless you and blow your mind. God begin to show me something, man of God. He said, I gotta pull my people up. Their mindset's got to come up in this hour. For some odd reason, we think the worst we
we look and the broke we are that we say. Uh, hallelujah. But God began to tell me something. He said, it does not glorify me for people to walk in the house of God. And everybody is walking around afflicted with something. Hallelujah. It does him no good. Come on now. Hallelujah. To try to draw people. And everybody in the house of God is sick or going through or living in poverty and defeat. Come on now. Hallelujah. God is getting ready to supernaturally change our circumstances so that the world will know that he is God. We got to understand that it's always been his will and his intentions that his people will be the head and not the tail. Come on. Hallelujah. We don't have no business being the only ones in the doctor office. Come on now. Hallelujah. The devil is crazy. Hallelujah. We got too many saints. Come on now. That are
Hallelujah. To bring about a change in the earth. Yes, Hallelujah. We've been talking about we having revival, but we ain't had revival yet. What we're getting ready to experience in this hour is a takeover. Hallelujah. God said it's not revivals, it's a takeover now. Hallelujah. Because we have taken revival and made it everything but what it's supposed to be. Come on. Hallelujah. We do revivals to raise money. We do revivals to try to bring people in, not concerned about souls, not worried about who's going to get delivered and set free. And revivals come and all the saints do is bring themselves. They don't bring no unsaved loved ones or anything with them. Hallelujah. And I have a problem with that because somebody in your family should want to follow you sometime. <laughs> but don't nobody ever want to follow you to church. I've got to question what you're doing at home. Because after a while, when they begin to see change in you, somebody going to want to follow you. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, I've got more sinners that, that support me than i got sons. Hallelujah. They're grateful. And they said, I'm, trying, I'm getting there. They said, I'm getting there, apostle. Here, I'm sending you this $100. I'm getting there, apostle. Here, here, $500. I'm getting there. I want you to stay on the radio. I want you to stay on television. Hallelujah. While the saints sit there and get everything God can give them and still won't support them man and woman of God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Y'all ain't to say no right there. I ain't to take no offering. I'm trying to get you blessed. Hallelujah. It's in my giving and in my, my, my servitude that God has blessed me. I've learned how to serve people even though I walk as a leader. I know how to humble myself to another person. Y'all are saying Hallelujah. If you ever lose that servitude, then you're going to lose God after a while. Because pride is going to begin to take over. Come on. Hallelujah. That's why you got to keep yourself in a servant's attitude at all times. Jesus wanted his disciples to understand that you were no greater than nobody else. Come on now. He said, so I'm going to show you a example. He took the towel, wrapped himself. Hallelujah. And began to wash their feet. I'm trying to figure out how many feet have you washed since you've been saved. Oh God. How many people have you humbled yourself to? Come on. Hallelujah. We get titles and everything and become all important. Come on. Hallelujah. And don't know how to serve nobody. But in this hour, God begin to show me something. He said, it's those that walk in humility that are getting ready to see the greatness of me in their life. Some of you need to understand that we are living in the last hours, not the last days, the last hours. Y'all ain't saying about that. And we need to get ourselves together in this hour because if we don't do something, if we don't see a change, if we don't start preaching truth like it's supposed to be preached, if we don't start telling people that they got to come out of sin and stop running around here thinking that you can still go to the club all night Saturday and get up and try to worship on Sunday, if we can stop letting people think, hallelujah, that you can't dress man like a woman.
These men and women of God of old knew that they stood in jeopardy of losing their life at any given time because of what they were preaching. Come on, hallelujah. The thing that I loved about the, uh, the, the, the disciples of old, come on, and, the, and, and those that worked in that time, hallelujah, uh, 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 when the Bible's talking about, hallelujah, I understand without a shadow of doubt, hallelujah, that, 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 that there are certain things that you preach against that will cause people to be stirred to try to kill you. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's the truth. Some folks don't want to hear that they can't have their booth out uh -huh. uh -huh. and still be saved. Uh -huh. Sanctified, in other words. Uh -huh. Be saved. Hallelujah. But you're not going to be sanctified. But no matter what nobody tell you, keep on looking at boo too long. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Boo going to start stirring. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't look at me and be praised. Hallelujah. That's why I am probably at this day and hour, the saints are doing a new shacking. Uh -huh. You know they got a new shack. What they do, they, they get together and then they go out up under the stars. And make some vows they say to each other. Y'all, y'all, that's what they're doing. And they come in and tell you they don't got married. Mm -hmm. So now they have to prove me the paperwork. Uh -huh. Stamped uh -huh. in the courthouse. Uh -huh. That I can go and research uh -huh. that you really had a wedding ceremony. Uh -huh. And a lot of times they were doing that so that they felt like they won't feel guilty mm -hmm. for fornicating. Mm -hmm. Don't look at that big crazy. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Some of y'all know you don't sit up there and let somebody slick you. Amen. And don't look at that big explain. And so we have to, in this day and hour, begin to let the enemy know that we're coming through. Because God's getting ready to, I'm telling y'all, uh -huh. if y'all can really see what I see. I see miracles uh -huh. in this region that's getting ready to come to pass. And some of you, God's getting ready to make you a living example of his holiness, his righteousness, mm -hmm. and his blessings. Uh -huh. You're getting ready to right. walk in. Hallelujah. And this is why we got to get the mindset of the people changed in this hour. Right. Because we sometimes you can live in a place where the environment begins to absorb in you. Uh -huh. right. Right. If you're always right. around poverty, after a while, if you're not careful, uh -huh. you begin to get a poverty mindset too. You always saying that. Thing. You become a product of the environment that you're in if you don't have a stable relationship with the Lord where you see beyond what you see with your natural eye. Hallelujah. Anybody that will live over in this area from what you see every day, you would see and after a while if you're not careful, there's a defeated mentality that will take you over because you're standing seeing drug deals, you're standing seeing prostitution, y'all ain't saying that. You're standing seeing people, hallelujah, living a lifestyle, hallelujah, that invites demons and devils to come in and take over people. And if you're not careful when you're in those environments, you'll find yourself becoming a product of something that you said you never would do. There's some things that when I begin to get into sin, hallelujah, that I said I never would do. I said I never would sell drugs, but I found myself selling them. Uh -huh. I said I never would beat up folks, but I found myself beating up folks. I said I would never pull a, a gun on another woman, but I found myself even now having to have prayer not to pull it. I tell the truth and shame the devil. Uh -huh. Because you got to know who. Uh -huh. And so God began to tell me, he said, he said, when you go there tonight, you give that testimony, you got to stir the people up, you got to let them know that there has been a shift in the atmosphere. Yeah. Look at somebody and tell them there's been a shift in my atmosphere. Now you can stay over over there in that going through dimension if you want to. But my going through days are over with. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Because why? Even if the enemy attacked me, he can't get my mind. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Because the, my mind is stayed on Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? And as long as my mind is stayed on him, I'll have perfect peace even when I'm not in a perfect situation. He can't take my joy. Why? Hallelujah. Because my, uh, my God. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I'm not losing my strength. Hallelujah. For anybody. Come on. Hallelujah. You better learn how to pray 
Bible said Jesus went about healing those that were afflicted by the devil. Why are we allowing the enemy to afflict us when we can live a life free from pain? I told God, boss, I said, I can't work for you. All messed up in my body. Say it, say it. That's right. I said, that's not even a good testimony yeah. mm-hmm. for people to see me preaching about the goodness of God. Uh-huh. And I'm all messed up, can't hardly move, can't uh-huh. hardly get around. Amen. Y'all looking at me crazy, True. running around here taking 15 pills a day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not a good testimony. That's right. That's right. Good testimony. That's right. God wants to show himself strong and mighty, but we got to give him the place. So here he goes. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell him he's getting ready to do something great in me. He's getting ready to do something great. So God began to talk to me about Mary on this morning. Hallelujah. And he began to tell me, he said, I'm getting ready to impregnate my people with greatness. Uh-huh. Look at somebody and tell them, what I got growing in me is bigger than this neighborhood. See, y'all worried about these few little people in this region. But God has given you a global thing. I told somebody yesterday, I said, you know what? I said, you know what? Y'all get on my nerve. That's what I told them. I said, y'all sitting around swapping sheep. You ain't even trying to go out there and win no more people. Y'all just swapping sheep. You go over here and steal these people's sheep out of their place, And they come over here and steal yours. And all y'all doing is just switching. And I, I had them laughing. I said, all y'all doing is trading demons. Uh-huh. And you're not going out there doing what the Bible says to. Uh-huh. He told us to go ye into the world. Look at somebody and tell them the witness is outside the door. Yes, yes. Stop sitting here just praying, talking about, Lord, just send them in. Hallelujah. Faith without works is dead. Uh-huh. Where is your witnessing team at? Hallelujah. So he began to talk to me about Mary. Look at somebody and tell him he's about to put greatness in me. Y'all just say it like you mean it. Look at somebody and tell him greatness is about to come out of me now. So I ain't got time to fool with these people with these little minds. Y'all just say what I'm saying? Hallelujah. When you see beyond, oh God, the religious system. Right. And the traditions of man, people will begin to try to fight you because you're not traditional and you're not religious. Uh, hallelujah. I told you, I'm not need one. I walk in liberty through Christ Jesus. Right. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, that's why Jesus was always talking to those scribes and Pharisees with such a fierceness because he said, your tradition have made the word of God of none effect. Uh, the people can't get delivered because you telling them all these traditions that you want to put on them to make them think this is what they got to do to be saved. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them some of that stuff we ain't supposed to be doing. Come on now. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. Don't try to tell me I'm not saved just because. Hallelujah. I don't have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, 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 my shirt up to under my neck. They begin to put all kinds of stipulations because man always wanted to be that you got to come through them for your salvation. But my Bible told me there wasn't but one way to come in. And that's through that door named Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't care what nobody's saying. Those that know him, he said, my sheep know my voice. Come on now. And a stranger, they won't follow. When you start knowing Jesus for yourself, there are certain things they came to say to you. Huh? Hallelujah. Certain things you're not going to follow. Certain things you're not going to do. And when you know Jesus for yourself and have a relationship, he'll tell you what you need to do. Hallelujah. Some things are our personal convictions. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe you can't wear certain things. Maybe you can't wear earrings because you might go a little crazy. But don't try to say that I can't wear. It ain't going to make me backside to put on earrings. It's going to make you. And don't try to take one little scripture out of the word that happened because the people of God was cutting up and they took some jewelry and made a golden calf. And, and no, the golden silver is not evil. It was the idol they made that was 
was in error. The gold and silver that they took off was not either. Because he says in his word that the silver and gold is his. The currency of God is silver and gold. It's not the dollar bills that we fight over. It's silver and gold. That's the currency of heaven. When Jesus told them to go get the money for the taxes, he said, you're going to find a coin, not a dollar bill. Uh-huh. 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 So we, the people of God, he began to tell me, he said, it's time out now, it's time now to open my people up because they need to understand that man has put stipulations on them to keep control over them. They told us we, we couldn't do a whole lot of things. And I found out a whole lot of stuff. I said, it's not no sin for me to go to the park. What's wrong with y'all? I can't go swing on the swing. I'm backslid. If I go to the park, I'm backslid. I'm a backslide sitting in a swing, playing on the monkey ball. Come on, y'all. And even to this day, they got all these stipulations. That's right. Come on, hallelujah. Right. And they ain't telling you about the liberty of Jesus. Hallelujah. How he sets you free. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. See, what we need to understand, there are some things, because we know the standards of God never changes, but holiness is a lifestyle. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Holiness is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that exemplifies Christ. That's what holiness is. It's walking in the standards of God's character, his behavior, and his attitude. It's not according to all this other stuff that we're putting on people. Hallelujah. We got to put people in hell over stuff that God is not even looking at. Come on now. Hallelujah. He's looking at your heart. You can put on all the long dresses and everything you got, but if you got unforgiveness in your heart, hatred, and bitterness, you ain't going in. Hallelujah. I'll probably get in before you do. Oh, Fix it up in here. You got to understand. So he begins to talk to Mary. Oh my God. Look at somebody and tell them you're going to need an encounter like Mary. This is the problem with the people of God. We come to church and we say, oh, we in the glory. And the glory don't never be there. Uh-huh. Well, if we encounter the glory of God, it should be a change in us. Uh-huh. How you just came out the glory and you got a nasty attitude? Uh-huh. 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 How you just come out the glory and you cuss? Uh-huh. How you just come out the glory and you over there across the street at the liquor store? Just gonna get in the presence of 
leprosy. And then the sixth month, Luke 1, 26, the angel Gabriel, the messenger angel, was sent from God into a city of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin and spoke to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. Mm -hmm. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou mm -hmm. among women. Uh, can I just stop there for a minute? Some of you don't even recognize that people hate you because they see your favor. They see the favor of God on your life. They see how God moves for you. Hallelujah. And sometimes people become jealous because, hallelujah, they, they're looking at the favor of God and they're trying to do everything. They, they're trying to give and everything else. Hallelujah. But I looked at this portion of scripture and I saw it here that I didn't even have to give an offering to get the favor. They say, unless you sow to me, you can't get the favor of God, or you can't get blessed, or you can't get nothing from the Lord, except you give me a seed. Oh, God. But God chose Mary when Mary wasn't trying to do nothing. Huh? Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. He didn't, he didn't go try to find the best woman in the town. He went and found someone that was innocent. Come on. Hallelujah. He in a way. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. The Bible says she, she was a virgin. Huh? Yeah, my, my shine. Hallelujah. Some things hadn't touched her yet. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. There's some things she hadn't experienced yet. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I thank you for the word tonight. Hallelujah. Because some of you need to understand that God didn't choose you because you had a title. You think the anointed on you just because you got a title? She didn't have a title. Amen. Uh, she was just known as a virgin. Hallelujah. And the Bible said he sent his messenger. Hallelujah. Uh, look at somebody and ask them, who showed up? Or oh, you got your announcement of faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who, 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 who showed up to you? Hallelujah. And the Bible said the angel came and told her and began to name, my God, begin to declare that she was highly favored and blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. You need to understand. Hallelujah. Sometimes they long ago they used to have that little thing they would say, I'm I'm blessed and highly favored, but they was living regular lives. Huh? The favor of God rests on you, honey. You won't line up with the will of God. Come on now. Hallelujah. And in order for it to continue to rest there. Uh -huh. yeah. And the Bible said, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Uh -huh. But the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Look at somebody and tell them, don't be afraid. Because you got favor with God now. See, sometimes we're afraid to do what God said. Because we're trying to figure out how can this thing be? How is this thing going to come back? How is this thing going to come to pass? I know what you said, God. I know what you told me to do, Lord. I know what you said. I know. I know. I have a I have surety in my spirit that I was hearing from you. I understand what you have given me to do, but I'm trying to figure out how is this thing going to come to pass when I don't know nothing. I don't know how to preach. I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to prophesy. I don't know what to do to lay hands on the sick. I don't know how to do this thing. I don't know how to love my enemies. I don't Oh, 
the song of the heart. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And, she shall, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost. Look at somebody and answer. Are you sure you feel with the Holy Ghost? See, we don't even preach about the Holy Ghost no more. Because people don't want to hey, my God. Hallelujah. And, 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 and you know what I tell people? You can be filled right on the spot. That's right. I know that for a fact. That's right. I know it for a fact. That's right. That you can be filled right then. Right. Hallelujah. That you ain't gotta wait till next year. Right. You ain't gotta wait till next week. How how willing are you? To yield yourself to the Lord. Hallelujah. Many times the resistance is there because we don't want to give up certain things. Oh God. And then unforgiveness is one of the good, best killers of you being filled with the Holy Ghost. Because he can't come in a vessel that's full of hate and envy and bitterness and, and anger and all that stuff. Hallelujah. We got to understand that the Holy Ghost is here to give us the power to do what God has called us to do and then he wants to give us the power to be able to resist the enemy when he comes if I wasn't filled baby I know I would have been thrown over I know I would have been thrown over cause I had some good temptation come my way I'm talking about some good temptation uh -huh. <laughs> that be huh? I could have sold my anointing y'all looking at me strange Hallelujah. Y'all looking at me real crazy. Hallelujah. Then what about the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Overtaking my life and me having a willingness to want to live right for the Lord. See, what the problem is in this day and hour, we got a whole lot of people that don't have real good examples. The examples that we have now are not good like we had back then. Come on. Hallelujah. Even when I was coming along, we had good examples of godly men and women. Come on now. Hallelujah. They taught us standards. They taught us how to preserve ourselves and preserve ourselves and to keep ourselves. Even though we might have made mistakes in the, in the world. Hallelujah. Once we came in. Hallelujah. They would teach us how to keep ourselves. Hallelujah. They would tell us what we need to do. And then and we didn't show up from church. Come on now. Hallelujah. Listen, they was knocking on the door when church was over. I don't know about one of y'all. Hallelujah. But they would do the rage on you. Come on. Hallelujah. When they show up on the door. Hallelujah. Your pastor didn't just let you just slip by. Come on now. Hallelujah. If you wasn't there, come on. Hallelujah. They, they inquired where you were at. Hallelujah. The leaders back then didn't let you slip by like that. But they kept a close reign on those that they knew had problems in their flesh and different things going on. They understood those that had my God. And especially when they knew sheep came in, they kept a watchful eye over them. And then they kept them saints that they knew was messy away from them. Y'all ain't saying that. They kept the gossipers away from them. They kept the ones that were slipping and tipping away from there because they wanted them to live a righteous life. There was a time when we was, oh my God, were able to talk to our leaders uh, and not have to worry about them trying to flirt with us uh, and trying to take us to bed. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It was a time when the church uh, took a black, oh my God, loved each other uh, and had a burden for each other. There was a time when the church had my God, uh, had a concern if one was hungry, we all was hungry. If one was going through, we all went through. Hallelujah, Jesus. We learned how to love each other. We didn't have no problems like they have now. We weren't trying to destroy each other. We weren't trying to take each other out. You didn't have to worry about Sister Fanny. She wasn't going to try to take care of her. If 
If you ain't got no standards about yourself, why would I trust you? Y'all looking at me real straight. Some of y'all women looking at me real straight. I'm coming on through. Y'all don't scare me. Because we need to understand. We want to get a miracle like Mary. Well, we become favorable to God. Look at somebody and tell them, I want God's favor on me. Hallelujah. I want God's favor on me. I want the favor of God to overtake my life. I want God's favor. Holy by sight. Huh? I want his favor on my life. And in order for me to have his favor, I've got to walk holy. Why is it we think the word holiness is a bad word? It's not nothing bad about being holy. Right. I told him, listen, I, I got the most utmost respect. Hallelujah. For people that don't even like me because they know my standards. Don't look at that be square. Hallelujah. And I don't care what they say about me. They can lie all they want to, but my life speaks for itself. See, that's what you need to understand. Let the people lie about you. Just make sure your lifestyle speaks for itself. The Bible said you'll know them by the fruit that they bear. They'll know you by the fruit that you have coming from your tree. Come on. Hallelujah. Don't worry about what people got to say about you. Let's continue to live holy because those of you that are, are walking righteous they're going to persecute you anyhow because then, my God, people get upset because when you come around, conviction overtakes them because they know they're not living right. They know that they got secret sin. So when you come around, they feel convicted. You ought to thank God that's a good thing. Because you're not going to be no willing to sin and think you won't hang with me. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them, we got to get a Mary mentality. And say, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which should be born of thee should be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called there. But with God, nothing. Look at somebody and tell them nothing. Nothing should be impossible. And Mary said, behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed when she came in agreement yeah. with what God wanted to do. That's right, that's right. Some of you keep talking about the angel keep busy to me. That's because you won't come in agreement with the message. God is trying to tell you, I want to use you. I want to use your life. I want to use you as an example. But you're going to come in agreement with the word of the Lord. When she recognized what God wanted, she didn't kick against it. Uh -huh. Even though I don't know how it's going to come out, God, be it unto me. Uh -huh. Be it unto me. Whatever you say. I ain't fighting against your will. The only reason why we have warfare sometimes is because we fight the process of God. That's right. That's right. We say, right God, I, I don't know what to do. Right there. And I, I'm in this warfare. And the warfare many times is there not because you anointed, mm -hmm. but because you fighting the process to get you to a dimension uh -huh. of being able to tell God a complete yes. Is there anybody in here that want to get rid of their resistance to it? Because there's some of us, we're resisting the move of God. Because we know that sometimes what God tells us to do is going to bring us warfare. Here is a woman that's waiting to get married. That the Lord says, now I'm getting ready to impregnate you before your husband even touches you. The, 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 what he says to her is warfare all by itself. She could die. Because of the tradition of that time. Right. That, 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 that is, you are married. You, you, yeah, uh, we right. kill that's you. Right. Yeah. Huh? Uh, we kill you because you have given yourself to someone that's not your husband. Uh, <laughs> your husband said he's never touched you. Uh -huh. oh. And so here God is telling her something that she knows could cause her her life. Uh -huh. 
And she does not really understand all that God is saying to her. She doesn't understand these things. But in the end, she agrees with the will of God. Oh, God. Is anybody in here ready to agree with the will of God? Even though you don't understand everything he's telling you to do, everywhere he's telling you to go, how to do the things he's putting in your hand to do. There are some of you right now, God's getting ready to change your directions on some things. Hallelujah. Some of you get ready to transition and move even out of this state. Oh, y'all got real quiet then. But God said, he's getting ready to use you. Uh-huh. One thing the Lord told me, Apostle, he said, why would I send you uh-huh. where you can't be used? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's right. I'm not sending you nowhere where I won't be able to use you. Uh-huh. If I'm sending you somewhere, it's because I have anointed you for that place. For that place. Uh-huh. And there's some people that need to be set free and delivered. And how many know that in this day and hour, we got to understand without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord is pulling us up out of those positions where we walked in fear and did not trust Him. This is the hour now when you're going to have to have real faith. He said without faith, it's even impossible to please Him. So how are you going to be pleasing to God if you don't even have the faith to trust Him to bring you through? He said, without faith, it's impossible to please me. You can't please me without faith. Because uh-huh. everything I did, everything I made, I made it by faith. Yes. I spoke the word. I believed that we would be so. Come on. And it was. And it still is. Still is. My God. Hallelujah. And the Lord began to tell me, he said, I have given my people creative power in their mouth. If they say the word, I have to perform. My word cannot return void. It got to go. And it got to accomplish whatever I send it into to do. It got to do what I sent it to do. Uh-huh. It cannot be denied. And why he said, heaven and heart, earth will pass away. But my word, yes. it ain't going nowhere. Come on now. Hallelujah. And this is why we got to begin to follow the word of the Lord. Because he said the word is a lamp unto our feet. To our pathway. The word don't lead you the way you need to go. But you gotta get to a place to where you trust the word of the Lord. If he tell you he gonna take care of you, why are you worried about it? If he tell you to come off that job tomorrow, will you have enough faith to trust God to come off the job and know that he will take care of you? Oh, some of y'all that's got right, real that's right, that's right. Never forget, man, the father Some of the Ziggler, 
was 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 how it played out, how he, he it played out, and what took place. Because how many know there are sometimes, how oh, oh, hallelujah, when we get direction from God and it looked like everything started falling apart around us. Uh -huh. God will tell you, listen, God will tell you to do something and then everything starts messing up. Amen. You'd be like, wait, did I hear God or did I hear something else? Right. Come on. And the enemy will try to make you think you miss God. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Because he's going to always oppose faith. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Every time God tells you to do something in faith, it's always going to be some opposition. But you got to take authority over opportunity. Listen, I was sitting in that, that dealership. I just went on me and didn't I? Uh -huh. I went on me and I had to, yeah, I'm about to pray for everybody. Uh -huh. Somebody in the other, somebody in the other room was having problems, but it straightened out too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Huh? Hallelujah. I told God, get all in the computer system, everything. Uh -huh. I, I went on in. I wasn't worried about them people. Come on. You step in this room where we at, we going to lay hands too. People was walking by and tipping. Yeah. <laughs> they was tipping by, trying to hurry up, get by. Oh, hallelujah. All that went on in, I went on in, I told God he got the move now. Because I see the devil trying to stir up. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. Because there's some that opposes the will of God. Hallelujah. And God made it and he fixed it. Come on now. Hallelujah. Well, even the, 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 the salesman, he was confused and perplexed. He was trying to figure out what the world.
I was in the hospital being here for a couple more days, but they brought my car to me. I signed the papers in the hospital. <laughs>
That's right. That's right. I ain't felt no competition. That's right. I ain't felt no jealousy from none of them. That's right. Huh? They came in and treated me. Come on. How to do that? And we work together. That's right. And when God put this tent up, we gonna tear the devil up. Let me me how to move. Because I preached under the tent in Compton, uh -huh. California, uh -huh. in between the Crips and the Blues. Uh -huh. Looked around one night, and was on the altar together. Uh -huh. and, and they were hugging each other and didn't know. And I was wondering why everybody started going up in a praise and everything. And come to find out that one of the men had just killed the other one's brother. But they was up under that tent, uh -huh. on that altar, hugging each other. See, you do make a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Because I ain't never scared. I told him, I said, come on, let this sin. You sell drugs, you can't be scared. Uh, come on. You gotta you, you gotta maintain a certain, you know. I, I, I ain't gonna go into my whole testimony because I have to repent every day. Lord, forgive me. Because I know I tore up a whole lot of homes just by selling drugs to uh -huh. That's the truth. I know a whole lot of homes got torn up because the, 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 the husband and wife got on you know, drugs and everything, and I was a source of their supply. Come on. And so I'll get for that. Hallelujah. And so that's why I can recognize a, somebody that dealing with drugs, even if they're sitting up in the church. And drugs is more than just you hitting that pipe. Some of y'all hooked on these pills. You need the difference. Uh-huh. That's right. Y'all looking at me spraying these pain pills. What's that pain pill they got? Oxycodone. The boy, the sinks got stacks of them in their medicine chest. Mm -hmm. Selling them pills. What they sell for $10 a pill or something? Something like that. Some of y'all know. You sell them. Just tell me. <laughs> They sell them people. Hallelujah. They, when, even when you go in the hospital or something, the saints will come up to the hospital room. You think they're coming to pray. They come to find out what, what kind of pain pills they gave me. Uh, yeah, yeah, Trying to get your prescription. Y'all looking at me. Oh, y'all didn't know the saints was on. Y'all so sick. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them God bring a deliverance. Hallelujah. And this is the reason why he's getting ready to do something supernatural in this area because he said it is time. Amen. Some of you have been praying for years for a mighty move of God in this region. Uh -huh. And the Lord said the time has come. Yes. It's, it was some states that God began to deal with me about. I know Florida is one. I know Georgia is another. Hallelujah, down toward this area. Hallelujah, he began to talk to me about a different state uh, that he was getting ready to open up. Hallelujah, a portal. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, and salvation is coming to those areas. And the Spirit of the Lord said, all I'm looking for is men and women of God that have the willingness to come together in love and unity and begin to work together as one. Hallelujah. We need some people that know how to be team players. Everybody want to be the big chief. And nobody want to be a team player. But I come to let you know the night that God is getting ready to use you mightily. Hallelujah. Some of you, your ministry on the inside of you has been stagnated because of even fear. And some of it has been because even your leader didn't recognize who you are. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. There are sometimes we do sit up on the leaders that don't see us. They don't recognize who we are. You got to begin to pray in this hour and ask God, where am I needed at in the kingdom for such a time as this? This ought to be the prayer of everybody that comes into the house of the Lord. Lord, where do I need to be in the kingdom? What do I need to be doing in the kingdom right now? Hallelujah. Come on, begin to open your mouth and begin to praise the Lord in this place. Because the Spirit of the Lord is getting ready to meet needs on tonight. There are some of you who's getting ready to break fear off of you. Because you got to go on and do what the 
But I tell people all this time, we ought to be able to tell somebody about the goodness of God. I know God done did something for somebody else in this house. I know somebody else done got a diagnosis that God turns around. I know there are those of you sitting in here that knew that you were supposed to be dead. But God raised you up and he protected you. When the enemy came to try to snatch your life, he stepped in the midst of you and death. And commanded death to leave you alone. You ought to be able to tell somebody that he is a life giver. You ought to be able to tell somebody that he's is a just finished listening to the media ministry of Apostle Barbara R. Thomas. You may write her at Apostle Barbara R. Thomas, P.O. Box 13291, Durham, North Carolina, 27709. Thank you for supporting the ministry.